Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Mirror Dungeon solo video. Today we'll be using an identity that everyone got for free if you played the game at launch. Blade Lineage Yi Song. Launch identities are quite funny to me. On the one hand, you've got characters like Kurokumo Honglu, who are basically only viable in their tiny niche. And on the other hand, you've got characters like Blade Lineage Yi Song, who are some of the most consistently good characters in the game. For Yi Song, most of this comes from his uptie 4, the thing that saved most identities and left others in the dust. Most of his strength comes from his passive, which gives him up to 3 bonus coin power for every 5 poise count he has. Without this passive, his rolls are genuinely worse than most 2 star identities, but with it, he ends up rolling better than most 3 stars. The reason he's probably like this is because at his initial inception, Project Moon likely assumed having high base power would be enough to warrant giving him low coin power. And while having high base power is a useful utility, especially when you are at neutral or negative sanity, they realized it wasn't enough to justify his bad coin rolls and quickly rectified that with uptie 4. Other than the coin power, he doesn't benefit much from poise, nor does he generate a whole lot of it. He generates enough to keep his passive active, and that's pretty much all you really need, especially for using him in a full blade lineage team where he can end up performing like he's a 4 star identity with all of Mersault's buffs. To start the runoff, we take Cigarette Holder and Stone Tomb for our starting gifts and choose the Outcast for the first floor. The first floor is pretty difficult for Blade Lineage Song. He has no way to heal himself when starting a run and as such struggles heavily on any floor. You essentially need to get lucky and either find a healing gift or a resource generating one early on or else you risk spending an hour on the first fight. We do get slightly lucky and find Phlebotomy Pack before making it to the final fight against the Golden Apple. We take Nebulizer for our reward and head into the Unconfronting for the next floor. Here we buy Emerald Elytra, Blue Zippo Lighter, and an extra skill 3 before making it to the boss against Chromer. This floor was certainly a massive struggle to get through thanks to Encorp having a lot of pierce skills. But the main reason I chose this floor, despite the fact it was a terrible matchup, was because I wanted to talk about Yi Song's newest ego, Fell Bullet. Now what's a better excuse to talk about an ego than being in a fight where you're forced to use them? Chroma herself is not that difficult. Force Corrosion on the third turn and you've basically won, especially if you're using an identity as strong as we are. And that brings me to my ego of choice, Fell Bullet. It is a very unique ego because whether it is good or not is entirely dependent on if you are capable of executing your allies or not. If you either fail to kill them or alternatively don't have any allies to begin with, it kind of really sucks. It will do maybe 100 damage to two enemies at best, which is not the worst thing in the world, but pretty bad for an ego that's main purpose is pure damage. Despite this though, it is still one of the most useful egos for soloing and it is entirely thanks to its unique targeting. It tries to target the ally with the least HP, but if you don't have any allies, it will instead target randomly. Now, random targeting is nothing new, every corroded ego is capable of doing it, but for the Awakened version specifically, it functions slightly different to all the rest. For corroded egos, the random target is set. It will always target the same skill slot no matter what, unless you use Dante's superpowers. But the Awakened version of Fell Bullet does not follow this same rule. Its target is not set, and therefore Yi Song can continuously spam it until it targets the exact skill he wants. It is an ego that does basically nothing while soloing, except allow you to clash with any skill you want, no matter what. It's mostly only good for regular fights, but the utility it provides is absolutely invaluable. Aside from that, it is basically designed to be used with Blade Lineage Song. Not only does he have poise and is capable of fueling it, but the Blade Lineage actually benefits from the death of teammates. Or I should say, more specifically, Mersault does. The more Yi Song enters his traitor arc, the more powerful Mersault will become thanks to his In Memoriam passive. It's not a lot, but it's nice to know that Blade Lineage Yi Song has more synergy with this ego than simply being a poise identity.
We take Endorphin Kit for our reward and head into Slicers and Dicers for the next floor. Here we find Illusory Hunt, and before we make it to the boss of this floor, I would like to take a moment and talk about the other potential boss, Bamboo Hatted Kim. Kim is a very dangerous boss for any identity without an evade, and no, it's not because he wants to claim our bones. It's because in doing so, he needs to bleed us out first. He inflicts a total of 7 bleed potency and 12 bleed count on the first turn, and if an identity doesn't have an evade, they need to have enough health to be able to survive the 84 unavoidable bleed damage that it does. This makes Bamboo Hatted Kim one of the most dangerous bosses in the entire Mirror Dungeon because very few identities are capable of doing that. And that brings me to my point. Why am I even talking about this guy? Obviously, Yi Song doesn't have enough health, nor an evade in order to be able to survive this fight. And while that is true, there has recently been the introduction of a certain princess identity who completely changes this outcome. Her support passive reduces the amount of bleed potency on an identity by 6, which transforms Kim's 84 unavoidable bleed damage into 12. That is an astonishing 85% reduction in the amount of bleed damage you take from Kim. She single-handedly makes bleed no longer an issue for any solo run. Is this good enough to allow Yi Song to beat Kim? I don't know. I think it is, but unfortunately, when I started a new run, I didn't get Kim as the boss, and instead we are up against the Wayward Passenger. This boss is significantly easier than Kim. The only thing threatening about him is his envy skills, as we are fatal to them, but apart from getting staggered on the first turn, we can clash with everything and get through the fight incredibly quickly. The worst part about this fight is not actually the fight itself, but instead the fact that, for whatever reason, it's incredibly laggy. I don't remember exactly when it started, but this fight, and also I think the Drifting Fox 2 if I'm remembering correctly, have been really laggy whenever you mouse over their skills. It started like a month or two ago, and I thought it would get fixed relatively quickly, but it's still here, and they've yet to mention anything about it in the patch notes, so, uh, Project Moon, fix your game. We take Ornamental Horseshoe for our reward and head into Burning Haze for the next floor. Here we buy Lithograph, Painkillers, and Resolution while also fusing Finifugality before making it to the boss against the Skin Prophet. The Skin Prophet is a relatively easy fight, all things considered. He gives you three free turns to build skill slots, giving lots of opportunity to clash with him once you actually can. However, there is one little thing that makes him slightly more difficult this time around than usual. We are Pierce Fatal, and with all of his unclashable skills for the first three turns being Pierce, he can end up staggering us on the fourth turn. This would not be a problem if not for the fact we also have a counter and therefore have no way to reduce the damage taken at all. Ultimately, this only means that we need to get staggered on the third turn instead of the fourth, and requires just a couple of resets to allow the Prophet to do slightly more damage to us and stagger us early. Everything after is easy. We clash with everything and he falls shortly after. Oh, oh, oh. 
We take the Bell of Truth for our reward and head into Time Killing Time for the final floor. Here we buy Eclipse of Scarlet Moths, Late Bloomer's Tattoo, Great Coat, Bloody Gadget, and another Skill 3 before making it to the final boss against the Time Ripper. Being Pierce Fatal, the main difficulty of this fight comes from the mini robots. We can tank at least one of their multi-coin skills, but any more than that is too much for us. Because of this, even though we don't need to use an Ego to win clashes, we still use Sun Shower to stagger the robots on the second turn and destroy them the turn after so we don't need to worry about them anymore. After that, we hit the Time Ripper's second phase and have basically won the fight. We can easily beat all of his attacks despite his incredible offense level and slowly chip away at him until eventually he finally crumbles. It takes a while because the Time Ripper is both resistant to slash damage and has a bunch of protection, so instead of us doing crazy damage like we should, we are only capable of doing normal damage until finally he staggers.
갈갈이 베어버렸어 기보다 정신이 맑을 데가 없군 And that's how I soloed Mirror Dungeon 4 hard using only Blade Lineage Yi Song. He is a very powerful identity, although this is only a fraction of his true potential, as if he's in a Blade Lineage team, he becomes even stronger. Even without that, he's still an identity who will serve you well. Great clash power, great damage, great everything. Anyway, that's it from me. Like and subscribe to not miss next time where we'll be using this character. Goodbye.